let me just get straight to the point today we're going to show you how to make a worm bed and raise your own worms get your own worm castings this video though i realize it's a little bit longer than a lot of the videos i i do but you know raising worms is a little bit nuanced so i'd watch it this one till the end we got the benefit of having my wife who's been a master gardener for years and done this talk several times she, I finally got her to agree to do it for me so I get it on the video. I'm thankful. She's a good woman. So come on. Let's go take a look. Let's see how it's done. She's going to show us exactly step by step how to put together a worm bed. This is going to be my example of a worm farm. How I long have you had them? Probably eight years. Uh, they've been done really good in that 55-gallon uh, tote. Uh, that I have them in. They've done very well. But I have given this talk several times with the Master Gardener program, and this is the way I do it. You can do it different ways, but this is the way I do it. All right, so I'm using this size tote. This is an example. The tote would probably be larger. You can do it in this size, but, you know, a larger one would probably be better. All right, so I drill holes all in the top because you definitely want your worms to breathe. And then I put holes in the bottom so that the any juices that build up in it can run out because you don't want them to drown. Okay, so in the bottom, we start mixing. Now, I, I have rabbits, so I use rabbit manure. Red wigglers love rabbit manure. If you have rabbits and you go under their cages and take the um, uh, start scooping the manure, you'll find red wigglers. So we're going to put that in first. Now, normally we would have enough to cover it, I would say maybe about an inch or so, maybe two inches. And then we're gonna put in some, uh, some uh, dried leaves. This is just some brown paper. You can put that in there. Uh, put a few more dried leaves. Where I work, we uh, shred a lot of paper. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's very, very fine. So I put that in next. All right, so then what I'll do is we'll put the, now these are some of the red wigglers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in on one side. All right. You've got them over there. Now I'm just gonna use this as the food. We, you can use table scraps. Um, some of the things that I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use onions or lemons or potatoes, carrots, lettuce, anything like that would be good. Um, no chicken, bones, anything like that. I wouldn't put any meat in there, but just about any kind of vegetable would be good. Just nothing citrus or I don't know. If starchy? You call it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Carrots are starchy. Well, I would say like onions, which are, I don't know what you would call them, but I wouldn't put onions in there. They love bananas. Um, you can put a whole banana, say your bananas have gone rotten for whatever reason, spoiled, um, or just the banana peel. They will eat those up, they love them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put whatever table scraps we have right there on by these worms. And then we're gonna take some cardboard. And you can soak this cardboard because it does need an amount of moisture and if it's too dry, it just isn't going to do anything. So they'll dry up, the worms will, or they'll try to escape. They're good escape artists. All right, so I would put that there and then put a little bit more of this. And like I said, make sure the paper, uh, the cardboard is wet. I usually soak it maybe an hour or so before I get ready to put them in here. But this was an impromptu video, so uh, we just didn't have time. All right, so then once you've got this done and they've eaten all this area that's right here, then you're going to put some food on this side. And you're going to put some more wet cardboard over the top. More paper, too? And some more paper. Now, see, if the cardboard is nice and soaky and wet, then the paper will get wet, too. 
and they like the moist. They don't like it too wet or too dry, but they like it moist, the area that they're going to eat. So what they'll do is they'll come from this area since there's no more food on this area, and they'll come to this area. All right, so then once they've eaten this, then you'll put some more cardboard on this side. So basically you're just exercising them, running them from side to side. Right, and that way you make sure they don't just stay on one side eating and they the other side doesn't get composted. Okay. So you just go back and forth, um, worms, food, cardboard, paper, and let them eat that down and then they'll move over and you put cardboard paper, let them eat that and then let, do once they've eaten all this and composted it, then you do it on that side and you just keep layering it going up. Okay. Now, when you get ready to uh, harvest some of your compost, um, you wait till it gets a few layers up and they're on this side. You'll take, or this side, whichever side they're not on. Uh, you take that side and scoop it out once it's completely composted. Then you'll start again layering uh, uh, manure, leaves, and paper as a bedding. Then the worms will move over there and you can start harvesting the other side. So okay. you just keep going back and forth. Okay, so when you do that, do you go all the way to the bottom basically? Or do you yes, just take a layer uh, or two? because they have started in the bottom. So you wait until this side looks completely composted on this side. Mm -hmm. Then you put the food on this side and you scrape all this out and you start over again on this side. And you just keep going back and forth and they'll keep moving from one side to the other uh, wherever the food is. That's about it. And then you have your compost. Well, thank you very much, Miss Master Gardener. She's cute, ain't she? Thank you, Mr. Master Gardener. That looks like some mighty fine compost right it there. It does. See the worms? Yeah. I need to cover that up. Let what me is grab. That? That's the other food. So you're covering the food up? Yeah. We really need to get out some of that compost. That's a lot of worm compost we can use. Yeah, there's some. All right, so this is some stuff that I froze <coughs> to feed the worms. And now I'm gonna cover it with some leaves, some dried leaves and some, new, and some uh, shredded paper. Now will they eat the leaves? Yeah, they'll compost all that. This will also uh, help them move from this end <laughs> to that end. It'll help them move from that end, from one end to the other? They follow the food, I bet. Yep, they do. All right, so now we're taking the compost on this end that's that has been uh, composted, or the material that we've put in here has been composted along with the worms into this bucket. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this side out and we're gonna move some more food on this side. We're gonna show you how to harvest your compost or your worm casting. The way we're gonna do it is we've got a, we spread out a tarp over here and on this edge right here, we're gonna put the, the worm castings or the material that the worms are in right now. Now the worms will move once the sun starts hitting them, they're gonna move deeper and deeper into the mixture. So we just pull the top off and put that in a different container. They don't care for the sunlight. They want it to be dark. All right. Watch them and in a few minutes, you're gonna see them they're all gonna start going down toward the bottom. You won't see any more worms in a minute. We took these worm castings out of the worm bin. Still has worms in it. So we're trying to get rid of the, uh, take the worms out so we can put them back in the container. So what we did was we piled it up and we let the sun hit for a little while. They don't like light. So they will go down deeper into the compost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check now and see if most of them have gone down. There'll still be some on the top, but you'll be able to, to get more compost out of it without the worms if you do it this way. So let's see what we got. All right, there's a few worms right there. You don't have to do this. You can actually um, 
use whatever you're going to use this for you can leave the worms in it but i like to keep as many as i can so that i won't have to order any more i think the last time i ordered it's been probably four maybe five years ago when i bought a thousand and they've multiplied and uh, had babies and so i haven't had to buy any more you can also use uh, night crawlers although night crawlers at night, you would have to leave a light over them because they will run away. <laughs> That's why they're called night crawlers. They crawl at night. In fact, most of the time to make their composting easier, I would either, I will take food, say we have too much food and freeze it. And I wish is what I did today. I put frozen uh, food in there. Once it thaws out, they will start eating on it. The only thing about it is, is that it will heat up. And so in the winter, they like that because it heats up the their bin. But in the summer, they don't. So they'll kind of wait until, until it's cooled down some for them to eat it. But with it being frozen, once you put it in there frozen, they like that part because it cools off the bin. But once it starts heating up, they don't care for it too much until it cools back down and then they'll start composting it. Now, if you look now, you see all those worms? See how they've gone down? Yep. I'm seeing them. Yep. And they'll just keep on going down as I take this up. Take this off the top. So you work your way down from the top and just let them continue to run away from you. Exactly. It is some rich, rich soil, or rich, rich compost. Be great for some, some more compost tea. Yes, it will. Also, another thing about this, I actually haven't seen any eggs. Of course, a lot of times they're so tiny, it can, they can be mistaken for you know other things, a piece of trash or, or whatever. They're, they're quite small. You wanna try to maybe, if you see them, you know, put them back in the bin instead of using them with the compost that you have because um, you definitely want to keep making more worms now if you'd like to see how to turn these worm castings into a refreshing tea that your plants will love check out this video Gonna be a hot one today. Shut up, Dwayne. If you see any of the baby worms, they're all called Erica.